So, hi. Um, the last two days, for some reason, YouTube is deleting 80% of the comments that are left on my videos. Please don't get frustrated and stop commenting. I think the video content had the word like civil and obedience and stuff like that, and it's got the algorithm jumpy. But um, I really do appreciate the comments, and I've been very busy lately, and I haven't gotten to respond to the comments like I normally would. Um, and I appreciate some people coming in and jumping in and trying to help people, which please do that if you see someone struggling with assurance of salvation and stuff like that. Uh, you know, please. Fellowship. Uh, anyway, I guess I'm going to go ahead and keep teaching some Galatians stuff here. Um, we're in Galatians 3. And uh, let's... We've been talking. We were talking about the supply that the Christian life, Christ in me, is supplied by the Spirit. So when he's talking about the Spirit, he's not talking about something else. He's talking about Christ in me. And he starts this chapter with, "O oh, foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you?" Right. And the word bewitching is really strong. And what is witchcraft? Witchcraft is enchantment to get your attention on something I want you to perceive. And in some cases, witchcraft can be, I want to get your eyes off of something else, and so I'm going to do something spectacular in front of you. <laughs> or it could be, I want to deceive you about the thing I'm trying to get you to look at. Uh, in the garden, Satan, uh, Nakash, the shining one, I think it literally means enchanter. And he was an enchanter. He bewitched Eve. And on the one hand, he got her eyes off of what she should have been focused on, which is the tree of life, which probably was not attractive outwardly compared to the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, which looked like it had the appearance of wisdom and looked like it was good and delightful, right? Very beautiful. And Satan himself was an angel of light appearing very beautifully to her and he was he bewitched her by enchanting her with himself and with the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and false promises and also corrupted the word right so all of that was going on. it was actually very complex he took something he got her to twist the word he said you know god uh as god said you shall not eat of it she said, we shall either eat it or touch it. God hadn't said that. So she added to the word. And then when he saw that she was not clear, with laser sharp accuracy on the word, once, once he saw that she was malleable when it came to the word, he knew he had her and he could say anything. And so he went ahead and bewitched her. He deceived her, right? Uh, seduced is how Paul calls it. And corrupted all those words kind of go together in the same theme. And the Galatians have been bewitched. And he said, you should, so that you should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ has been evidently or evidenced as crucified among you. So this bewitching got their eyes off of the crucified Christ and onto something else that appeared to have a form of godliness, uh, but like he says in Colossians 2, was of no value against the indulgence of the flesh, which is do not haste, do not handle, do not touch, and commandment keeping, law keeping, the law of Moses. And the Judaizers used their superior knowledge of the Bible to mystify them and to catch them off guard these were false brethren crept in unaware to spy out their liberty to bring them into bondage. They had their Jewish background so they knew the Bible inside and out and could quote it. right? And they used the Bible itself and the law of God and the law of Moses and their own spirituality. Because these people operated with a zeal. We know about them from the uh, Corinthians. Uh, the things that Paul says about them. They boasted in the flesh. They boasted of dreams and visions. They had an appearance 
of godliness that was beyond what the normal person would have uh, because they were zealous in their flesh to put on a show. They put on a show. Their spirituality was a show. And I'm thinking of like Benny Hinn and Catherine Coleman and these theatrical people who could put on a show of being able to do great exploits for God and everything. All of that is a witching, bewitching. When Paul presented himself, he presented himself very plainly. He even says later in Galatians, look, I appreciate how when you received me, you received me in weakness. And because of the weakness of my flesh, you were even willing to pluck out your own eyes and give them to me. He, he did not come to them in bluster, uh, but in weakness. And that was a hallmark of Paul. So that even in Corinthians, he said that people said of him, his letters are weighty, but his bodily presence is contemptible and his speech, you know, he's in weak. Um, God chose the foolish things and the weak things and the base things to hide his most precious truths in so that those who are puffed up in pride because of wisdom and strength wouldn't recognize them. Sort of like how Jesus said, you've hidden these things from the wise and revealed them to babes. There's a plainness to a genuine New Testament minister who's really got the real goods. They don't have to put on a show for you and pretend to be more spiritual than they are. They just talk. Well, well, these people put on a show in their flesh of great spirituality and boasting and self-righteousness and holy zeal for the law and knowledge of the scriptures and all of that together bewitched the Galatians and got their eyes off of the gospel and they started working for a wage trying to get the blessing that had already secured a justification and then thus losing the blessing so Paul will eventually say where was that sense of blessing you had their sense of the blessing of God is gone it came with the gospel and with the spirit by the hearing of faith but went with the law when they put themselves under the law they put themselves under the curse but one thing I want to say is that the protection of bow the protection of bewitching against bewitching the protection against bewitching is yourself to be very knowledgeable about the word and to search the scriptures daily to see if these things are so. You know, the hyper dispensationalists get on my wall. I added some more after that last message. And they've been taught, a lot of them are new believers, for a couple of years in the faith. And they were taught by the hyper dispensationalists before they themselves read the Bible. And so they'll actually come saying that they're grace, but arguing that Old Testament saints were justified by law. And all they have to do is read Romans 4, and they can clearly see Paul saying that Abraham was justified by faith apart from works, and, and David was justified by faith apart from works, and by the works of the law, no, by the works of the law, no flesh should be justified. All they have to do is read Romans 4 and Galatians, and they could get it cleared up in a heartbeat. But because they haven't read the word directly, they can argue against those scriptures and not even realize they're doing it. And the hyper-dispensationalists, with all their charts and graphs, seem to have knowledge. And, and it's very appealing to someone who wants it. I want to know the Bible, you know. They get you in their charts and graphs, and before you know it, you're, you are captivated and bewitched by a system of thinking about the Bible without having contact with the word itself. And I'm sorry if that offends you if you've, you know, if you're a hyper dispensationalist, but I get tired of it. Uh, they're so difficult to reason with because they don't reason directly from the word. They repeat, uh, you know, in fact, their emails, like the emails I get from them, because I get these berating emails from hyper dispensationalists. The worst emails I've seen have come from them, the meanest, where there's just like no grace. Uh, but it's interesting because they all say exactly the same thing and I can literally copy and paste 
one guy's email into another and you wouldn't know the difference. I mean, it's it's the same spirit, same tone, same repeated phrases, and almost no scripture. But anyway, that is an example, and we've all been be- we can all be bewitched. People who listen to John MacArthur have been bewitched. You can be bewitched by someone who seems to have what you want, and or represent what you want, and you think that there's something you need that you don't have. See, Adam and Eve, at, they were created in the image of God. They would have lived forever. They were in the likeness of God, but. Satan convinced them that they needed the tree of the knowledge of good and evil to be like God and live forever, which is ridiculous. They already had everything, but it was because they didn't believe it and sensed their own lack that they put themselves in because of Eve's ignorance of the word, that that combined is a deadly combination. If you're ignorant of the word and you think you're lacking, and of course, if you're ignorant of the word, you're going to think you're lacking. The flesh lacks. The only way we know what we have in Christ is through the Word. And if we don't know the Word, then when someone comes promising something, blessing, you know, whatever it is, rewards, and they seem to know the Bible, we'll listen to them. Especially if they seem real sweet or nice. But meanwhile, they're bewitching you, getting your eyes off the crucified Christ, and on to whatever pursuit they want to put you on. The New Testament ministry presents you as complete in Christ and warns you to tell you that no one sh- you should not let anyone steal your crown and tells you that everything you have you've already been uh, everything you need you've already been given in Christ and you're blessed with every spiritual blessing in him and all things are yours and you're not here to serve men to be a slave to men uh, except in the gospel You don't have to obey somebody else's, you know, this or that to get anything from God. You've got everything in Christ. And Paul always warned in all of his epistles, if somebody comes to you not according to Christ and doesn't bring you Christ, don't let them take you off as spoil. Like he says in Colossians 2, let no one carry you off as spoil through his philosophy and empty deceit, vain traditions, Right, according to the root elements of this world, and not according to Christ, for in Him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and you are complete in Him, who's the head of all rule and authority. So Paul says you are complete. The, the New Testament minister says you are complete in Christ. All the fullness dwells in Him. Let no one carry you off as spoil according to anything that's not Christ. And this is the same thing. He's saying, you've been bewitched. It's a kind of witchcraft. They don't know they're witches, but they're operating in witchcraft because witchcraft is the manipulation of your senses to get you to disbelieve the truth and be attracted to something that's not true. That's what witchcraft is. The most blatant example of witchcraft we have in our society is advertising. I've talked about this before, that Edward Benet's, the father of modern modern advertising, performed an experiment, a social experiment to show the value. It used to be that commercials would just tell you what, you know, you need to buy this. It's soap. It cleans things. And they'd say, oh, I need soap to clean things. And you bought things that you needed. And so people would sell you things by telling you this is what you need. This does what you need. But Edward Bernays said, no, I can produce a society of consumers who aren't just buying what they need but buying what we tell them they want. And we can create a perpetual uh, engine of economic prosperity for ourselves by getting, manipulating people to think they want something that they don't need. And the first example, the the, the, uh, experiment he did was to convince women that they should smoke and that this was a sign of patriotism and also uh, women's suffrage, I believe. It was during the time of the suffragettes and the flappers and getting voting rights and it was empowering. And they didn't want to smoke. Men smoked. It was gross. But he got women smoking by associating smoking 
with independence for women, women's rights, and pa- I believe patriotism as a social experiment. And the smoking industry made billions, you know, or however, hundred millions, whatever it was back then. But that was the proof, you know, and that was witchcraft. Uh, I don't know why I use that example right now, but witchcraft is all over the place. And we th- we've been told that witches are like wearing black hats and, you know, riding on brooms and all that. But no, witchcraft is just someone who can beguile you so that what you have is not enough. And ultimately in Christ, you have everything. They say you don't have everything. You say, I'm blessed. They say, no, you're not. Are you tithing? You know, back then it was circumcised. Are you circumcised? You're not blessed. I didn't see you at the feast. Oh, you can't come because you're not circumcised. You know, uh, God, you're, you don't have God's favor. The, God's disappointed with you. He's going to discipline you. In fact, you are a disappointment to God. <laughs> well, that's a, if you're a, a believer in Jesus Christ, you need to learn that what is this antidote to this kind of bewitching? Well, you need to learn that you're complete in Christ, that you have peace with God through your Lord Jesus Christ, that you are accepted in the beloved, that you're standing in grace, that you're blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenlies, that you were predestinated unto sonship, foreknown by God the Father, given to the Son as a gift, and being brought home to the Father as an inheritance. And you have everything. And God delights in you, uh, Jesus said that the love you have for me may be in them and I in them. God loves us with the love he has for the Son. The love of God. We need to be perfected in the love of God through the knowledge of Jesus Christ. And the more we are satisfied with Christ, the less we will be able to be bewitched by anybody who tells us we need something else. And babe, babes in Christ are especially vulnerable because they don't have they're not grounded yet so almost all of us get carried off as spoil and then God brings us back through the knowledge of the truth there's no way to come back except through the knowledge of the gospel what we have in Christ so that's why we emphasize positional truth you know um, but remember at the beginning of this epistle he said I marvel that you were so soon removed from him who called you into the grace of Christ to another gospel which is not another, only some seek to trouble you, uh, perverting the gospel of Christ. He said they were so soon removed. That means that it happened right at the inception, when they were first born again and didn't have a clue yet. These Bible thumpers came in with their incredible knowledge of the Bible, supposedly, and their supposed, and their zeal for spiritual things, and their mystical powers and all that. And it just completely pulled the wool over these guys before they even had a chance to get grounded in Christ, carried them off as spoil. And and Paul said, you know, I'm weeping over you and I'm, I'm, I'm travailing over you that Christ would be formed in you again. Christ is not the center. Jesus Christ had been evidently set forth as crucified among them, but now they're no longer obeying the truth. They've been bewitched. And he calls them foolish. But all of us have been foolish and we all had to come back home to Christ that he has he's everything we need and so a more mature believer is just someone who has more knowledge of Jesus Christ and what he has in Christ and is less susceptible to the bewitching the 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 uh, truth is what solves the problem of witchcraft just truth just the word you know uh, you can't deceive me if I know the truth And that's what Eve didn't have. And that's what we need to have. Um, And then we we need to recognize that we should not be impressed with men. That's the other snare. You know, in Corinth, the problem was they were so impressed with these ministers who turned out to be ministers of Satan, angels of light, you know, false ministers of righteousness. Uh... But they were so bewitching in their ability to speak well, speak powerfully, put on a show, you know, and, and to the point where the people would tolerate anything from them. 
He said, you tolerate if people if these people smack you in the face. He actually said that in Corinthians. They would gotten to a point where nothing the, those spiritual people could do is wrong. But because Paul did not come in such an impressive way, but came in weakness as a normal human being and just simply spoke the truth clearly, they weren't impressed. And if they're not impressed with you, they don't think you're, you know, you have anything they need. And so appearance and uh, being able to enamor people with your charisma is especially dangerous, you know. Um, charismatic preachers can really be a problem for new believers especially because they're so impressive and the new believer doesn't know that 90% of what that charismatic person is saying is false and then when you try to say no this is false this is the truth they want to defend that person this is my favorite person who are you to say you know the babes uh, it's a real headache um, because they don't have the ability to discern except Eventually, the Lord will shepherd them. You know, He will give it to them because eventually they're going to suffer because of their association with these people that are abusing them. They don't know they're being abused yet, but eventually they'll figure it out. <laughs> Until then, there's not much you can do. You know, you just have to keep speaking the truth, and that's why we expect that people are going to dislike us, and we don't get offended or moved by it because we know that this is the process. We went through it too. You know. Uh, we're not expecting to be able to capture large crowds or enamor anyone. All we have, you know, we are nothing. I'm nothing. The only thing I've got is to be able to speak, you know, the gospel as God has shown it to me and comforted me with it. So I wanted to touch that part about bewitching before moving on in Galatians 3. I'm almost home, so I guess that's the end of this message.